welcome. My name is Sharon Mahoney. I'm the Director of Artistic Operations for Nashville Ballet. Hi, I'm Ashley Forche. I attended the summer intensive this past summer and I'm now a student in Nashville Ballet's Professional Training Division. Thank you so much for hanging in there and staying tuned and we hope you are going to enjoy our first webinar. We decided to do a webinar in order to try to reach um, a lot of people who might be auditioning from various cities and give them an opportunity to hear our philosophy and why Nashville Ballet Summer Intensive might be the right choice for them. We also um, thought we would go through a lot of things that might answer some general questions and then be able to take questions at the end. So I wanted to kick off by um, telling you a little bit about our brand new facility. We opened last May the Martin Center for Nashville Ballet. It is a really incredible, beautiful 50,000 square foot facility. And it has seven state-of-the-art studios. And four of those are used, our four largest studios are used during our summer intensive weeks. Mm -hmm. There's a terrific um, lobby area and great uh, dressing rooms for everyone. And we have a lot more natural light. It's a really beautiful building. And I'll let Ashley comment because she was actually in the inaugural group of summer intensive that enjoyed the building for the first time last year. Yes, it was such a pleasure to be able to take class and enjoy the summer intensive in Nashville Ballet's wonderful facilities. State of the art would definitely be an understatement in my opinion. They are so large, there's plenty of room to dance and express yourself and have a wonderful time. The natural light is a great thing as well because like we were discussing, Nashville Ballet and Nashville as a city just has wonderful weather and it's great to get that sunlight in during the summer. But great floor is everything you could need for a wonderful experience. Absolutely. And we, um, in addition to that, what's most important for us is we approach our summer intensive in a way that allows each student to have some goals in mind that they would like to accomplish. And we want to work together with them and really get those goals accomplished. We do this in kind of two ways. During our audition tour, we teach our audition tour as master classes. So already we are looking for students who are really open and eager and respond well to our style of teaching and the information that we have to give. When we see students like that, those are the ones that we really target to try to get here. So once we've assembled that really energetic and enthusiastic group, we start with a placement class. And in the placement class, we are able to then not really level people by sort of where they are in their training, but more importantly, look at areas that we feel technically they might need a little bit more support in or um, certain areas of focus. Hopefully that will align with their goals and that's kind of how we split people off into groups. So I'm gonna let Ashley tell a little bit about kind of what that feels like and what we do to get people oriented. Um, definitely, the placement class was a wonderful experience even from the audition tour, as she said, with the master class, I so clicked with National Ballet's vision and the passionate teachers that they have to offer. I really liked how National Ballet did their leveling because like Miss Mahoney alluded to, we're grouped by what we need to work on. So everyone's kind of a level playing field as far as ability but I'm not doing all these jumps when I need to be working on turns. I felt that my needs were really accounted for, so I was able to make maximum progress over those five weeks, which is why I decided to stay here for the year. And that is our ultimate goal. We really want the summer. It's a time when a lot of students are free from their academic studies, so they have the opportunity to really concentrate on something that they're passionate about and that they love. And we like to work with students like that and share our passion and really them accomplish our, their dreams. It's, a, it's our goal that you leave feeling like you've really improved and even better you return to your home school where they say wow 
called What Happened to You This Summer? So uh, I want to show you a couple of slides of some of our summer intensive answers. They started here with a summer intensive and then progressed usually through our second company or one of our training programs that we have during the year. Um, Lindsay Group, you can see, is a, now a company that's too advanced to learn more after having been here in the summer intensive and so our shoulders keep on you. Danielle Brown is a principal dancer with Sarasota Ballet. And Jess is also here what? in the summer and then selected to stay for our second company. And Cheryl Watson, who has recently been promoted to a company member, has been here. Gerald is a, a really wonderful case study because he came to a summer intensive <laughs> and we loved him so much we wanted to keep him right away. He was yeah. at the Boston Observatory. Oh my god. So we were really supportive so of that as well. Yeah. And Gerald would come back to me <laughs> so, so that we would really keep up with him. Oh, he would so be funny. finishing his degree oh, during the year, but then come back and play his ballet like every summer to make sure we got eyes on him. And as soon as he graduated, he came back and from there has been so promoted up into our new company. Because it's Mike in the bathroom. I felt like that was good. Well, he's Mike now. Ashley is also in one of our training programs, and she is in our professional professional training position. And she decided after last year in the summer where we worked with her, we asked her about staying and talk a little bit about sort of that process and what happens. Definitely. I What I like a lot about Nashville Ballet and how they do their choosing process for year-round opportunities is they really take the time to know you and figure out how you work and what you need to work on. So it wasn't that I came and week one they had decided who could stay for the year and who could not. So it was around week four that they all sat us down and we had a meeting and they told us which of us were offered the opportunity to stay and those of us who weren't. But I thought that everything was done in a really nice and professional manner that didn't make anyone feel bad. But we were well educated about the programs throughout the summer so that while they were getting to know you, you could also see the wonderful things that Nashville Ballet has to offer and see if that would be the right decision for you. Yeah, we feel like that's a very important partnership because you're always going to excel when you find yourself in the right place with the right support. So we definitely feel like it's a two-way street and we really encourage the dancers to discuss with their families and ask us a lot of questions before committing to one of our programs. That's something we also talk about in our audition tour. When you take an audition masterclass with Nashville Ballet for a summer intensive audition, we really want you to consider what you liked about the class. Did you feel like this uh, faculty member was um, somebody you connected with, as Ashley said? And do you feel like we would be the right summer intensive to help you achieve your goals? In addition to really working on your technical goals, something that's very important to us is artistry and um, the person. And so we try to assemble a faculty that is really going to push you in your technical abilities, but also continually help to develop your artistry. Our guest faculty this summer is, of course, our artistic director and CEO, Paul Vasterling. He is actually here throughout the entire summer intensive but he has dedicated the week of June 20th where he will be very heavily in the classroom. Uh, as Paul is sort of like the maker of our mission and our artistic vision, it's really important for him to oversee and get in the classroom and guide us and the rest of the faculty through that dual technical and artistic um, advancement. Uh, in addition, we have Jared Reddick, who is the Assistant Dean of Ballet for the University of North Carolina School of the Arts. He will be with us the week of June 27th. 
After that, we will have Dawn Scannell. Dawn Scannell is one of the principal coaches for Houston Ballet. She's a former principal dancer there. And she works uh, quite a bit with Nashville Ballet. We have her come in and coach our company members during the year in the classical ballets that we do. She's staged ballets for us before, and she loves to come and work in the summer intensive. Um, lastly, we will have Mania Barreto rounding out our guest faculty. She'll be here the week of July 11th. Mania is the artistic director of Metropolitan Ballet Theater. She is an incredible teacher. She was an amazing dancer, but has for uh, a lot of years been really training incredible students. We have a couple of students of hers that are now in our company. Mania is also, um, I know Ashley can speak to this. Yes. She was here last year and she is just amazing to work with and will work with the youngest of the students all the way up to the pre-professionals. Tell a little bit yes. Ashley, about Mania. Mania is definitely one of my favorite teachers that I've ever had the opportunity to work with. She is absolutely adorable, but is definitely someone who gets you to work hard and achieve great things with a very kind demeanor. But she still gives a wonderful, very hard, very challenging class. But she's the kind of person at the end of class, you just want to give a big hug. She's a wonderful person to be in the room with. She really can motivate you. And definitely. In the nicest way of possible. Uh, that's actually a, an important selection factor for us. When we choose our guest faculty, we really want to find teachers that we believe in. We believe in what we've seen them produce. And when they're here, they're not only enhancing the students' abilities, but they're also enhancing the rest of the faculties. It's a great professional development and just a great sharing time for our core faculty that teaches here throughout the entire year. Um, our core faculty as well that are here throughout the year and in your summer intensive, uh, our school dean, Nicole Koenig, and our company ballet masters, Tim Yeager, Allison Zamorski, uh, one of our company teachers, Denise Eason, is on faculty. One of our company dancers, John Uplager, is always here. Um, myself, I love to pop back into the classroom a lot in the summer. It's such great energy and a fun time to work with a lot of students from across the US. And um, Kate Kostelnik is one of our uh, full-time faculty members and DeAndre Horner. All of these faculty members that teach throughout the year really have some sort of development and connection to Nashville Ballet. Most of them were former dancers here, and a lot of them, uh, Allison Zamorski, one of our ballet masters for the company, came here from summer intensive herself and up through the training programs and into the company before becoming a ballet master. It's a uh, there's something about Nashville Ballet that really keeps people coming back uh, <laughs> and really has kind of a, a I guess it would be like a, a sort of a home and yeah, a community home support, yeah. but at the same time, a strong drive, high integrity, and a lot of artistic push. Definitely. Can you talk a little bit about that? One of the things that really drew me to Nashville Ballet and is part of the reason why I love it so much, it is such a dynamic and energized organization, especially among the core faculty and other faculty members, as Ms. Mahoney was talking about. Everyone has a very clear vision of what they want you to achieve. So I don't feel like each class, while we might have different things that we focus on, everyone has this underlying goal to make you the best that you can be and focus on technique and artistry. And that just allows you to be pushed to such an amazing level, much farther than I ever thought I could be pushed. Um, I would like to highlight a few of the core faculty members that I have really had a chance to work with and connect with. One is Ms. Koenig, who, as Ms. Mahoney mentioned, is a school dean. She is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, they all are. But she takes a very unique approach to technique, unlike any I've ever seen. She's very hands-on, but very nurturing at the same time. She really focuses on technical aspects as well as artistic aspects, which is another thing I think sets Nashville Ballet apart with YAGP and all of the competition circuits that are kind of coming into this world. I feel that we are so focused on technique, which is very important, but what Nashville Ballet 
gets us to remember is that at the end of the day, it is those dancers who are artistic and share their soul with people that are really going to make people fall in love with ballet, remember ballet, and have a positive impact on their lives. There's also Mr. Uplager, who teaches pas de deux over the summer intensive. Nashville Ballet was actually the first time that I had the opportunity to take a pas de deux class, which was absolutely amazing. And being taught from someone that I've been able to watch effortlessly, effortlessly partner all these wonderful people and hearing his perspective and expertise on how best to do things really allowed me to advance a lot over those five weeks and into the school year. And then lastly, I'd like to highlight Mr. DeAndre Horner, who does modern as well as contemporary works. He is wonderful and has such a wide array of skills that he can offer students. And I think along with that, Nashville Valley really does make you a well-rounded dancer. And that is so important for marketing yourself to companies and being a real asset in the dance world. That's definitely something that we always want the summer intensive to be a reflection of our company. And our company repertory really spans from very, very classical works like the Sleeping Beauty and Swan Lake to very, very contemporary Rite of Spring. And it's important for us that our dancers have that kind of scope and that they're able to technically and artistically really take an audience through any of those ballets. So in an effort to create dancers that would eventually feed our company, it's important that our summer intensive has the same sort of um, diversity in the styles of dance that we push. DeAndre is a special um, success case for us as well. He's a former student of our school. He grew up here in Nashville and he trained here and was in our second company and then went away and had his career as a contemporary dancer. And when he retired, he's now returned back yes, to it's the been a wonderful treat, <laughs> which is really terrific. And he now is um, heading up the contemporary program in our school and on the faculty. Uh, for those of you who might be coming um, to stay and are wanting to stay at Belmont University, we have a really incredible program where Belmont University dedicates an entire uh, residence hall to just Nashville Ballet. It's a really terrific way for um, students who might be going away from home for the first time to feel very safe and secure, for parents to feel good about where their children are staying. Belmont has a very um, beautiful campus and really terrific residence halls, very safe atmosphere and a safe area to live in. And we transport the students back and forth from uh, the Belmont residence halls over to Nashville Valley. And we're kind of in the same neighborhood. And Ashley, I know you loved the dorms. Yes, but loved would be an understatement. The Belmont dorms are fantastic. I would describe them as luxurious. <laughs> there are sweet styles. So what I really like about that is each person gets their own bedroom. So if you want to go away for a bit and talk to your mom, or maybe you want to read a book and just get away for a bit, you have that opportunity. But there's also so many wonderful common spaces, and I have a feeling you're going to want to be social till the wee hours of the night rather than spending time in your room. But get your sleep. It's a long day. Um, but everything at Belmont was absolutely fantastic. Um, great staff there. We get our lunch, and, or actually our breakfast and our dinner from Belmont, and it's just a wonderful place to stay, beautiful campus. Yes, and the, um, speaking of that, the meals that we have arranged, if you're staying at Belmont, as Ashley said, you have uh, catered meals that are right in the dorm, so you're able to come down from your room and even take food back up if you want and eat up in the residence area or you can mingle downstairs. We have breakfast and dinner served there at Horrell Hall. And then lunches are served here at Nashville Ballet Studios. We have a really terrific new uh, multi-purpose room that acts as sort of our cafeteria for the summer. And we're able to have catered lunches here. We also worked um, really closely with a lot of local restaurants here in Nashville. And we had a schedule of different catered lunches that came in. Yes. And we tried to get a really good plan together that was gonna energize the dancers, give them good food and good fuel for the day, but um, still be 
enticing and interesting yes. and good food to eat. So Ashley, tell a little about the lunch. Definitely. Um, the dancing was obviously my favorite part of the summer intensive, but the second would be the lunches. <laughs> I cannot express how amazing these lunches are. I know that Nashville Ballet worked with Coco's, Calypso Cafe, Whole Foods to make these wonderful meals that, like she said, are very energizing, but don't make you feel weighed down in any way. You were definitely ready to go after eating lunch and you're wonderfully energized, but you also get to enjoy a delicious, well-balanced meal. I think that's something that misses from a lot of summer intensives. Sometimes you're not always given the best nourishment and being aptly nourished is such an important thing to performing at your peak. So I really commend Nashville Valley for doing such an amazing job on this. As we we work them pretty hard during the day, so <laughs> yes. we definitely want to encourage a lot of, uh, we have what we call in the hallways hydration stations. Yes, with the, the water is amazing. Yes, with filtered water throughout the building, so if you're planning to come, bring a water bottle because Lots of you water can bottles. fill up, and we encourage a lot of that, um, as well as... Be, staying at Belmont, I wanted you to know, especially if you're a parent of a younger student, we wanted you to know a little bit about our chaperone process. So, so our chaperones, we actually have three main chaperones that are typically non-dancers, and that's important to us because we really want them hired specifically for the position of maintaining the student's ability to communicate back and forth with um, Nashville Ballet, with their families, and we want over 21-year-old background checked, um, driving records checked. We have a lot of um, training that they have to go through. We are adding additional training for those chaperones where they will actually be onboarded by Belmont University in a lot of different aspects of security and safety and the normal um, training that the Belmont University uh, students go through if they're going to be um, residence hall managers. So we're adding a lot of different steps to make sure that you will feel completely safe to send a younger child here. We specifically hire people who are really interested in the age range that we are servicing and they might be um, pursuing a career in early childhood education or social work anything where they really feel like they are ready to engage and create a really comforting and safe atmosphere for those younger students especially. They also oversee our supplemental chaperones, which we do use some of the 18 and above dancers that are here for the summer. That's just as important because for younger dancers, looking up to dancers that might be coming here to start their pre-professional career, that's a really neat thing for them to have access or have a chaperone that they might get to know. And they get to see, if you're 11 years old, where your dance training might take you in the next several years. Um, the Horrell Hall is the residence hall that Belmont gives us, and it is uh, reserved solely for Nashville Ballet. We also have the ability for students who are over 18 to um, have their own residence area in Horrell Hall, and they are kind of on their own and um, outside of the rules of Belmont University, they're able to maintain their own comings and goings, which is really nice with that resident and sort of like, um, like dorm, not dorm yeah. style, but like the resident hall style with your private room and then a little kitchen area and stuff. That's really handy for the 18 and up dancers that can really take care of themselves. Um, beyond chaperones, I know, uh, trips or something. Yes, trips are wonderful. One of our favorite trips that we went on over the summer was to the studios that we come to every day. The chaperones do a wonderful job of putting on a prom for us. It usually takes place during the last week of the intensive, and we all get dolled up and dance the night away. And it's super fun to dance with a lot of people who are good at dancing, because I know sometimes you go to school dances and you feel like you just need the fist bump it out. But now you can do whatever you want. And then you also don't have the stress of bringing a date, which I know is like amazing. And prom twice in one year, I mean, how much better can it get? So come for prom as well. But um, 
we go to water parks, we go to see fireworks on the 4th of July and have a cookout. They really do a wonderful job of showing you all the wonderful things that Nashville has to offer. Just the malls. Yeah. This is a great trip to see a movie. Uh, the chaperones are also in charge parents of sort of younger children so that you know it's really a strong goal of ours that they make sure that the younger children are feeling comfortable making friends, interacting with each other. They put together even just like board game nights and things like that in the um, residence hall at night so that the kids are not hiding in their room. You know, we're expecting more of the older students to go and rest and yeah. ice and take some private time. But we really want the younger students to have a lot of fun interacting with each other. Um, all of us that uh, grew up attending summer intensive will remember back it's um, it's a really incredible opportunity to make lifelong friends in the dance yes. world over the course of the summer and there's so many students coming sometimes even internationally it's a really great way for students to learn from each other and create these really lifelong friendships which is really nice the performance opportunities that we have for our summer intensive are definitely assigned to certain sessions um, session b will session b1 would be is friday june 17th so that would be the end of the two-week session we would have an informal in-studio uh, showing of usually we like to work on classical material with the dancers and then also a contemporary piece we want to have a little bit of a showcase showing you what they've worked on and what they've learned. Our largest uh, showing is when session B2 and session D and session E all culminate. And there are two showings on Friday, July 22nd. That is um, where it's a really neat one because you will get to see sort of the progression of all the different groups that have been working. And again, classical ballet is really focused on. We really like to focus on core work, especially for the women, because it might be something that they don't get an opportunity to do a lot at their home studio. And it's a really important aspect of training, especially just prior to going into, say, a professional training division or an NB2 program, because that is where they are going to, with a professional company, do the most of their work. And core work is a really, really learned skill. Yeah, Ashley's nodding her head about that. So I'll let her talk a little more about that in a second. I just wanted to mention that if you do attend a session that does not have a performance opportunity, those would be sessions A1, A2, or session C. We do encourage parents on the last Friday of the session to please feel free to come and spend the day and watch classes so that you really still get an eye into what your child has been working on and get a chance to meet the different teachers you've been hearing about and really be able to see your child in a variety of classes throughout the day. Um, Ashley, tell us a little bit about that performance opportunity yes. and working on that. and. Absolutely. First, I'd like to say it is so nice that we get to do both a ballet and a contemporary piece, once again following with Nashville Ballet's vision of making these wonderful, well-rounded well dancers. Additionally, I really like how the performance is done in a more informal setting. They have a beautiful studio that is converted into kind of a theater-like setting, but it's also usually on the last day so you're dealing with travel and all of these other variables and it's so nice to just see your family and your friends out in the audience and really get the focus on showing them all of the improvement and growth that you've had over your course of your summer intensive also with the core works that we got to learn we were coached by the wonderful faculty and i cannot tell you what a rewarding experience that was and they do a really tremendous job. It is pretty incredible even for us to see what everyone is able to accomplish in those short amounts of time to really work on some serious classical ballets. Um, a lecture series is something that rotates throughout the summer intensive. And we have a lot of different supplemental uh, style lectures. Media training is one of my favorites. Our director of marketing and sales, Jan Morrison, does an incredible, um, she works with the kids and 
gets them ready for uh, possibly ever being interviewed. Uh, they do a lot of role playing. They talk about social media. We have production elements. We talk about costuming, anything that could relate to their career in dance, but also possibly be a additional career they may want to pursue after they would finish dancing. Artistic development is something we talk about, and there's usually a chat with artistic staff, choreographers, or directors. We feel like the lecture series is something that's really important because we want to make sure that we're always developing the whole person because a dancer is always going to have to become something else when they're done with their dance career. So we really want their minds open to a lot of different avenues and other um, careers they could possibly pursue and where they could put their training and all of the endeavors they've put into dance, how that would blend into other areas. That's a wonderful point that Ms. Mahoney makes. And what I like that the lecture series kind of teaches you is that while it's so wonderful that we get to dance and do this amazing thing, there are so many skills that this art form arms you with and your dance training can take you in so many different facets and directions in life. Don't limit yourself. I mean, definitely go for your dreams, but the lecture series shows you that you really have the opportunity to make a wonderful impact beyond the stage in the studio. And that is something that we try to carry over in our year-long programs as well in our professional training division and in our second company that it's really important to be developing yourself as a whole person. Uh, our daily schedule throughout the summer intensive, I have a, um, a sample one that we're going to put up on the screen. And this is, as you see when you look across this sample schedule, you'll see, of course, technique class every day. Something that we do a little different is we do start the day off in the morning with either Pilates, yoga, or floor bar. And we feel like that's a really great way to get the students kind of like slowly energized and ready to go. And then we do do a two hour technique class. We feel like the two hour technique class is really important in the summer. It gives us the ability to repeat exercises, stop for a minute and really concentrate on a technical aspect or introduce a new thought process to dancers and let them have a chance to work on it. You'll see, of course, uh, ladies point work and men's classes, there's pas de deux. And wherever you see that on the schedule, I want you to note that it actually happens across the board. So this is one example of a daily schedule. So the, on a Wednesday, maybe the next level would have pas de deux. Uh, female port de bras is something that we work on a lot. It's a really great way to take very specific classical roles, like say something from Swan Lake, and work on that very particular port de bras, which only goes on and strengthens the dancer's understanding and knowledge of general classical port de bras. Uh, conditioning and strength and stretch is something that's really important, as well as the general Nashville Ballet repertory and contemporary and also musical theater and jazz. So we kind of have a broad range and that goes all the way across the board throughout the summer. So. Yes, Nashville Ballet Summer Intensive has the most rigorous schedule. It is absolutely phenomenal. You really come here and you get to dance a lot, 9 to 530. It's a long day, but it goes by so quickly because you're learning so much and having so much fun. And like the schedule shows you, you get such a wonderful variety of classes and wonderful variety of teachers. It is just such an awesome time to learn and grow and really improve yourself as a dancer. It is a wonderful experience. And and Ashley, tell everybody, it's actually a six-day-a-week program. Yes. So when you're here, we do come on Saturdays. Saturday's a little bit yeah. more of a fun day. Yes, right? Saturdays are super fun. An hour and a half class, so yep. we back off just a little bit. You have the hour and a half 
technique class, and then your second yes. class of the day is toe You really. have these wonderful supplemental classes that change every week. We've done everything from hip hop to Irish step dancing, you name it. It's a great opportunity to get outside of your comfort zone and try something new. And also at the end of the week, if it's something new and it maybe isn't going great, it's a great time to just laugh at yourselves and put yourself in a new environment. I'm really thankful for those opportunities. We try to push a lot of different cultural um, African yeah, dance. Katak. And yes, we did. Yeah, yeah kids are watching River Circuit Talk from <laughs> the summer. <laughs> And um, something else that we'll be working on and sending out information about, because of course your family is most likely traveling with you at least twice to drop you off and then hopefully to come back, especially if you're gonna do one of the performance opportunities. So we'll be working with the local travel bureau to try to get some special discounts or deals for families that are visiting Nashville for the first time. And those will be coming out through some upcoming emails. So as you can see now, we have two programs that happen during the entire year. And as Ashley said, we select our final dancers for those programs from our summer intensive. The professional training division is the one program that you actually can come to without having to attend our summer intensive. You do have to attend one of our auditions. If we um, select you for consideration for the professional training division and you are not going to attend our summer intensive, you can still have the opportunity to contact us. And if space allows, you could come into that professional training division. If you are interested in being considered for that, we recommend that dancers attend session E, which is the five week session of summer intensive. For our official second company, which is called NB2, we do select our final dancers for that program also from the pre-professional session of our summer intensive. And there are a lot of information on our website about each of those programs and we can take some questions about those as well uh, when, you, when we start our question section. Belmont University has an incredible collaboration with us they have a special degree program they started called Belmont University College. And that is traditionally for um, actually like older adults that have maybe started their regular career and are looking for a very flexible schedule in order to maintain or further their um, degree. Belmont University, knowing that our dancers are really obligated through the majority of the day when, uh, say, normal college age students would be going to school, they have opened up an automatic acceptance to their Belmont University College program. And that goes for anyone who is in our professional training division, our second company, NB2, or our main company. So that's a really incredible automatic acceptance. Which so is incredible. Great. And a lot of dancers are really taking advantage of that so that they're able to work on getting uh, a lot of prerequisites out of the way while they're still doing their dance training. And it's something that we highly encourage as well, because as we said, you are almost always going to have a second yeah. career. So um, the slide that is up right now is going to explain how to type a question in if you haven't already been chatting with us so there's a large red arrow you can see there's a box um to your right of your screen it should be and if you will just type questions into there we will be um, taking your questions so the first one that i have is actually will everyone get the opportunity to take padada Yes, absolutely. That's something that's really important to us. Um, we know how exciting it is. And a lot of people who are training in their home studios are definitely uh, going to be pretty much predominantly full of girls. So they may not even have boys training with them at their home studios. When we get here in the summer, it's a really great opportunity for even the youngest dancers to just get that first sense of being partnered. So we definitely try to do partnering in every single level and at every session. So even the session, we have some boys training in our school now that will attend the A and B session. So even the younger boys would be doing that. Um, 
This is a good question we have coming in. Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> one of our participants is saying, as a male dancer in my school, he wasn't trained much in pas de deux. Would it be fine? So what I would say is since Nashville Valley was actually the first time that I ever got to do pas de deux, it's a great time to come and get into it. The instruction is wonderful, and they're very nurturing of making sure everyone is accounted for, no matter what your level or experience is. So I've had a wonderful time and had the opportunity to continue doing Panda throughout the year, so I'm really thankful for that. Yeah, and as um, Ashley mentioned earlier, uh, one of our company members, John Uplaker, is sort of an incredibly innate partner, and he's a, a really wonderful resource in particular for the boys and for the men because he's able to really walk them through a lot of different <coughs> tips and tools as well as we often have partnering taught by a male and female so that they're able to get both perspectives, and that really helps the women as well, especially if they're being partnered yeah. <laughs> for the first time. Um, there would be partnering as well in the session a1. Um, A1 just means it's the one week. We consider that um, we'll have students there that will be there for just the one week and then for the two weeks. And we would be having some boys that are training in our school now that would be of that age and attending there. So we definitely plan on doing um, a session. Let's see. How many approximately in each level? This is a great question. Our um, sessions A, B are newer to our program, and we definitely in the audition process try to focus that age group from about 11 to maybe 14. It um, has only two levels in it when they're here during the year, and so at that point we're probably looking at maybe about 20 or possibly 25 in each class. During the um, other sections of the summer intensive, especially sessions, say, C, D, and E. There's uh, three different levels within C, D, and E, and we probably have closer to 25 or maybe 30 yeah. in each it's class. Accurate. And again, it depends on when we level them in their placement. Like Ashley was saying, we're sort of trying to level them in groupings of where we want the concentration and focus to be. So it can be a little bit of a mix of ages at that point. The pre-professional session is in the largest room in the building and definitely would be somewhere between 30 and 40. Um, in From summer intensive and into our NB2 program or our professional training division, our professional training division, we have the ability to probably accept um, somewhere between uh, 12 and 15 for the year for that. As far as NB2, we are usually looking for around um, 11 to 12 girls to come in for the next season. And as far as boys go, we probably try to carry anywhere between 8 to 10 boys for our second company. Uh, this is a great question we're getting. How does the two-week program compare to the five-week pre-professional? Well, the five-week pre-professional is um, really separated for dancers. That's where we're going to place dancers that we're considering for our second company. So those dancers really need to be ready to be selected for second company, which means they've graduated high school or they're really of an age to be on their own. During the year, we do not provide housing, and so they do have to have their own apartments, and they have to be ready to really handle their own um, grocery shopping yeah. and, you know, as Ashley's doing herself and feeding themselves. And so we uh, really keep the pre-professional session really just for the considerates of NB2. In um, session C, D, and E, and E is also a five-week session, and C is a two-week session of that, it doesn't differ at all. It's absolutely that, that same daily schedule you were looking at. It's um, just as intense. It's just for a shorter period of time. Of course, we're always going to be able to accomplish more the longer we have someone. But yes. it's pretty amazing what we can do in even two weeks. I yes, think you the know things this place like, can achieve are amazing. So, yeah, yeah, come we, for whatever you can. Yeah, when we notice, like Ashley was here for five weeks, so yeah. when we notice, um, she probably noticed at the end of session E, or session C, when a lot of people leave, 
for us, when we see new people come in for session D, we see the ones we've already had for two weeks and we see already a huge improvement. And I think they see it. Yeah, definitely. And then by the end of those three weeks, that's yeah. a pretty incredible advancement. Um, the dorms do have a full kitchen. Yes. Yes. They do, they do have. Oh, that's a great question because someone is saying they have a lot of food allergies. So it's really great to be self-sufficient. One of my roommates actually had food allergies, and she was of the age where she had a car and could go and buy food. And since the dorms have this lovely full kitchen, she actually cooked all of her own meals. Even if that's not an option for you, I'm sure that the, there will be a way for you to find food that fits within the parameters of your allergies. Definitely not something yeah. to worry about. And this is another good one for, I'll let Ashley oh, answer. Okay. The rooms are private. Yes, they're suite style. So you have your kitchen and your common area, and then each person has their own bedroom with a dresser and a desk. So you have your privacy, but also plenty of area for socializing and having a wonderful time. Oh, the dress code for classes. Yes. We alternate between black and white, and those are that's the dress code we use for everything. So um, it flip flops from you know Monday, Wednesday, Friday, black leotard, Tuesday, Thursday, white leotard, and then it flips back for, for the next. Leotard, right? Saturday, Saturday, you wear whatever you want. Yes, you so. wear whatever you want on Saturday. <laughs> um, for the men, it's either full black tights or full gray tights. Yes. I think that's correct. So, uh, for video auditions, someone's asking about the deadline for video auditions. I would say our auditions actually wrap up um, the weekend of March 5th and 6th is pretty much when we're finishing our regular auditions. We will still see some potential candidates for MB2 possibly coming into uh, take maybe company class or MB2 class throughout the month of March. That's actually fine because um, when you're at the age where you're looking for a second company program, it's um, you have a little bit more time. But if you are at the age where you're really looking to secure your spot in a summer intensive, I would definitely get your video auditions in by, say, March 15th because we would want to be um, – we'll have some deadlines coming up, and when our auditions finish, we're turning around our responses within two business days, and then we're um, hoping to have people secure their spots within two weeks of hearing. So as the summer intensive starts to fill up, you wouldn't want to be sending your video audition in too late to get evaluated. So I would definitely say in the next couple of weeks for sure. Oh, the resume requirement for, um, no, that is a great question. I have a question that says, is the resume requirement for just MB2 or pre-professionals, or is it for all intensive students? And their daughter is 15. Yes, no, it is not for all intensive students. For just our summer intensive, we really just need um, a headshot and a picture in first arabesque. That's what we really want to be able to see. At that point in time, we're really just evaluating them in the classroom. If they are interested in the MB2 program and they're a potential candidate for that, that's when we want to see a resume. We want to see, um, even if they're interested in the professional training division, we want to see what their performance background is like. You guys have great questions. Yes, keep them are, Yeah. Um, uh, you know, this is a good question. Uh, will students also be exposed to the balancing technique, whether it's in variations or repertory? Yes, uh, we definitely um, will. For us, we really infuse a lot of the best of classical teachings. So we don't really subscribe to um, one uh, version of classical ballet, say, uh, Vaganova or Royal Academy of Dance. We're actually a really strong blend of all of them. We like to really take uh, what we think we need from one in order to get what we need to get the dancers to. If we need dancers to have a lot of uh, quick twitch, it's called, or a lot of um, fast petite allegro, then we're going to push the envelope and we're going to start working on some using rhythms that Balanchine would have used and kind of pushing that envelope. We definitely, you'd see 
variations that are from the Balanchine repertory through different guest teachers mm -hmm. and things like that. If they dance that, they're going to bring that into the classroom and push that along the way. If you choose to stay in the dorms, are there mandatory and times and places you have to be at whenever? Uh, this question is, kind of has two answers. Yeah. If you are, yes, if you are 18 and you want to stay in the dorms, then you have a lot more freedom. We are not going to watch you in your free time, but uh, Belmont University is going to have sort of like a kind of everybody back in the building. It's much later but they are definitely going to want to see that you're back there. If you're 11 years old, absolutely. And not only do you have mandatory times and places you have to be, but you have mandatory check-ins with your um, chaperones, with your immediate chaperone, and then you also have to be in groups. If they, go, or if they are going to get permission to go anywhere to walk to ice yeah. cream or something like that, everybody has to travel in groups. And you have to sign in and out with the chaperone on duty and your chaperone you're assigned to does need to know where you're going to be every time. So, but you have a lot more freedom if you're 18 and you're able, if you've brought a car, you're able to drive and things like that. Okay. My family has considered me being able to drive to Whole Foods or something like that. That's absolutely okay. It says that they're 16 if they are going to have their own car. 16 is a little young for when we would typically allow that, but it's um, definitely negotiable. So it's something that as long as we would have a sign off from the parents that this is what they're hoping to do and that they want their child to be there with their car and vehicle, we can take care of all of that. Um, off-campus students actually can purchase lunch here or bring it. their own it's lunch. It's so good. You should at least purchase it. Well, I guess you have to purchase it for the whole week. I was yeah. going to say, you should at least purchase it for Italian. I know, lunch. really. Um, you actually can purchase separately uh, the five day a week, I believe it's $10 a day for lunch. And that um, gives you the same catered meal that everybody is getting. Or you're more than welcome to bring your lunch and you can also leave if you want, if you're old enough to leave and you're staying off campus anyway, you can go and eat lunch and then come back. You won't so. be disappointed if you buy the lunches though, I promise you that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, there is a, there is a dorm, I guess you would say dorm monitor. Belmont University does have an actual staff person that is there in the lobby of Coral Hall and they awesome. act as a dorm monitor. The chaperones, there's one chaperone at least on every floor and the chaperones and the head chaperones will um, divvy up and they do a room check at night in particular for the younger kids yep. and stuff. So there's a, a, I forget what your curfew is. Do you remember like it's staggered? 10 or, or I think it's like 10 on the week nights and then 11 yeah. on the weekends. I was 17 I a, at the time. Yeah, and I was a little younger now for the other ones. And uh, yes, chaperones absolutely live in the residence hall. That's mandatory. And there's a chaperone on duty at all times. The chaperones um, during the day when all the dancers are here, there is still one chaperone at the residence hall on duty, and that is um, in case anyone wasn't feeling well or couldn't make it in. So even if a child is sick or maybe had a bad headache, um, they would stay with them at the dorms if they needed to stay in the dorms that day. Um, I've seen some point shoe questions. Um, if you are not on point yet, um, I have, I'm going to read a couple of these off. Do you have to have point shoes and how many point shoes do you recommend for the two week intensive? Um, that's a good question. I'm pretty harsh on point shoes. Uh, I find that students today don't wear them long enough to get them as soft as they need to be. So I wouldn't say you need more than two pair for a two week mm -hmm. intensive. And that's really just having a backup. Uh, three would be excessive. I would expect to see, yeah, I don't want to see them that hard for that long. I would expect to see them working the shoe more. You do not have to be on point. If you are not on point, 
in the um, we would probably try to place you in the A B sessions because we will have the ability in the A B session to work with dancers on pre point exercises. So if you aren't on point, you would just be able to do those exercises in your flat technique shoes. If you are advanced enough in your dancing especially say in technique and especially in contemporary or you're a really good strong mover and you're an older dancer but you definitely haven't been on point that can also be accommodated in our c d and e sessions and whenever we have point class you basically would again just do that on your flat technique shoes it's extremely strengthening and so there's nothing wrong with taking point class without uh, point shoes on uh, i saw an interesting one the transportation to the studios for a student who is 18. Um, if you are over 18 and you have elected to say you would like to stay in the dorms and you don't have to pay for the food and everything, but you have, there's a really good rate for you to just stay in the dorms. And then like Ashley said, you can kind of cook your own meals and yep. things like that. Uh, if you do not have a vehicle with you or you don't have a car, you can also um, purchase, it's very, very nominal, to ride the bus back and ride forth bus. to, yes, the bus is literally a bus. Yep, it's a school bus um, and the driver is awesome. Yes, and we went to a school bus because we were really able to service a lot more people coming uh, back and forth to the building instead of shuttles. But you can uh, jump on and purchase like supplemental transportation. Uh, if you basically want to do the full room and board, even though you're 18, that's totally fine. And actually included in the full room and board is your transportation back and forth. So, um, oh, I'm getting told last question. Okay. Um, Jan is saying she wants us to do, uh, what happens if you get a stomach bug or something during the program? As I mentioned, the, there is always one of the lead chaperones that stays at the dorms. If someone is not feeling well, the very first thing we're gonna do is we wanna keep them away from everybody else and make sure that they get rest and they get feeling better. So they get to stay at the dorm and relax. That chaperone will be there with them. Um, the chaperones would also take care of anything like needing to take someone to the doctor or if um, they want to be calling home or if we see how they're feeling. And then they would work with the parents back and forth if it's um, something that's like a stomach bug that's just 24 hours, we can handle it or really try to feel the child out for how, how they're feeling. Ideally, we want to get them back into class as quick as possible, but we do want them to feel good because it is a huge outpouring of energy. Yes, definitely. And you really need to have your energy up so we would rather that they rest. Um, I did want to say that since we can't take any more questions, that we are probably going to take these questions and put together a little bit of a FAQ. So if we missed anyone's questions, we'll gather um, these, the information and try to get more answers to you and send some more information out. We can't thank you guys enough. For yes, thank you so much for watching. Jumping on to our first webinar and we hope to see you at one of our auditions or if we already have at one of our auditions, we hope to see you this summer. So come to Nashville Valley, it's a wonderful <laughs> place.